Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Sick MRI, and this is a 20-year-old female who complains of chronic headaches. She also has had difficulty swallowing since she was young. She had a CT scan done recently, and they noted that she had a Chiari malformation, which is the cerebellar tonsils that go down too low. And on this view here, we can see she also has ballooning of her ventricles. This is a right lateral ventricle filled with fluid, left lateral ventricle. Usually young people like this will have very small slit-like ventricles. And um, in this patient, they have very big ventricles, so we call this at least moderate hydrocephalus. Also, the third ventricle, which is right here, is dilated. If we go down here lower, this is the fourth ventricle here is non-dilated. So big lateral ventricles, big third ventricle, and then the fourth ventricle non-dilated. And now we know from the prior CT report they have a Chiari malformation. And a Chiari malformation is when the cerebellar tonsils, the bottom part of the cerebellum, go below this line. So this is the base of the brain here. There's the back, the occipital lobe, bottom of the clivus. We draw a line between here and the cerebellum. Really shouldn't go very much beyond this, maybe three millimeters most. Most people it's above this. And this patient it goes down, it went down up to six millimeters below. So the cerebellum was migrated below this line. We call it cerebellar tonsillar ectopia or a Chiari malformation that can be from a developmental abnormality or anomaly where the posterior fossa where the cerebellum sits is just too small and it migrates down. And other times it can be from uh, problems that cause too much pressure pushing it down um, and making it go down low. Now in this patient, we'd say, yeah, there's a Chiari malformation that goes down too low. The brainstem is displaced anteriorly and kind of flattened. This is the pons. The pons usually has a more ovoid, rounded contour. The flat front of it here means there's a little bit of mass effect um, compressing this. We call it flattening of the pontine belly. It goes along with the Chiari malformation. When this goes down, it puts pressure on the brain stem, flattens the belly. And the fourth ventricle, which is this little triangle, goes down a little bit lower than usual. We call it elongation of the fourth ventricle here. Again, the fourth ventricle is not dilated. Sometimes people who have Chiari malformations will have hydrocephalus. It'll obstruct the CSF flow. And the CSF is the white stuff here. This is fluid in the brain, the cerebral spinal fluid, CSF. It'll flow out the lateral ventricles here into the third ventricle. It'll go through a little channel called the aqueduct of Sylvius here, out into the fourth ventricle, and down through, out, around the spinal cord. And anything that obstructs that will cause the ventricles to balloon out and become dilated like this. So this could be from the Chiari malformation going down here, causing pressure. But this is just a little bit of a cere cerebellar tonsillar ectopia, just very mild. And I wouldn't expect it to cause such hydrocephalus. Also, the fourth ventricle is not dilated. But the patient has one other finding here that I think explains this, which is this. This is the third ventricle. And the roof is ballooned up. That shows uh, that goes along with... Uh, hydrocephalus, and it's very large. Well, the aqueduct of Sylvius is this little channel here. This is the tectum. Here's part of the midbrain, and right in between them we have a little channel. Usually it's very small and skinny. This is bigger than usual. It's ballooned up. This is elevated. So the pressure from the third ventricle is elevating this tectum here, but at the very posterior margin here in the back, extremely tight right there. So it looks like this is an aqueductal stenosis. The aqueduct of Sylvius they can have little congenital webs or diaphragms, and they can cause it to be obstructed. The flow of the CSF is impeded by that little diaphragm or web. Sometimes you have tumors of the tectum or other areas here that will cause aqueductal stenosis. But in this case, I believe this is going to be a little diaphragm or congenital web. The aqueduct of Sylvius causing aqueductal stenosis, ballooning of that aqueduct in the front, and enlargement of the lateral and third ventricles. And because these ventricles are so large, I believe it's pushing down on the brainstem and cerebellum, forcing it down, and that's causing a secondary carrier malformation. So rather than the carrier malformation being a primary cause of hydrocephalus, I believe this is aqueductal stenosis causing hydrocephalus, causing a secondary carrier malformation. And this is just one more view looking straight at it. We can see the lateral ventricles here, third ventricle here, here are the temporal horns of the lateral ventricles that are dilated. And this is that cerebellum, the tonsillar ectopia, worse on the right, just very, very mild. And that's it. Thank you so much.